This is the scoop for Monday. Now, Megan Bowman with the WMNF News headlines. Today marks the second anniversary of the landmark decision by the U.S. Supreme Court that overturned Roe v. Wade. The high court's ruling in Dobbs v. Jackson Women's Health Organization took away the constitutional right to abortion, abandoning nearly 50 years of precedent and paving the way for states to ban abortions. The decision sparked legislative actions, protests, and numerous lawsuits placing the issue at the center of politics nationwide. Abortion is now banned at all stages of pregnancy with limited exceptions in 14 Republican-controlled states. Meanwhile, most Democratic-led states have taken actions to protect abortion rights and become sanctuaries for out-of-state patients seeking care. Florida law now prohibits women from getting abortions after six weeks of pregnancy, which opponents say is before many women even know they are pregnant. However, this November, voters can decide through a ballot initiative to enshrine abortion rights in the state's constitution. A political committee fighting against the proposed constitutional amendment on abortion rights raised over $100,000 during the first two weeks of June. A newly filed finance report shows a large part of the money came from Catholic dioceses. The Florida Supreme Court on April 1st issued a ruling that cleared the way for the proposed constitutional amendment, also known as Amendment 4, to go on the November ballot. The proposal says in part... No law shall prohibit, penalize, delay, or restrict abortion before viability or when necessary to protect the patient's health. Americans for Contraception brought a 20-foot inflatable intrauterine device, or IUD, to Likes Gaslight Park in downtown Tampa on Friday. It was part of the IUD Express, a tour to promote access to reproductive health care after state lawmakers blocked a bill that protects access to contraception. Healthcare Voices founder Laura Packard says people should know who voted against the bill. Too many people don't know uh, what's at stake and they may not know how their legislators have voted on this. Lawmakers U.S. Representative Kathy Castor and State Representatives Lindsey Cross and Susan Valdez were also in attendance. Attendees spoke about the importance of access to reproductive health care to diverse populations of women, including those in smaller cities who do not have access to a local Planned Parenthood site, women of lower economic status, and older women. Jennifer Moore is the regional treasurer for the Democratic Women's Club of Southeast Hillsborough County. So we need to do more for these people, our women, our sisters. The tour has also made stops in other cities, including Orlando and Miami. Tampa officials announced a major change to its police department last week. The city will add a fleet of electric police vehicles. And WMNF's Tyler Aldano tells us what led to the decision and the impacts it could have on the environment. Mayor Jane Castor announced the Tampa Police Department will receive a nearly $1 million federal grant to begin replacing its fleet of gas cars with an electric alternative. We're doing all that we can to reduce our carbon footprint here in the community and going to electric vehicles is one of the ways that we'll be able to do that. The new cars will be quieter, easy to repair, and are allegedly faster than the police department's current vehicles. Police Chief Lieber Koss says the move to electric is environmentally conscious as well. Getting vehicles is a challenge nowadays. There's supply chains issues, there's, there's money issues, and any vehicle that we can get is great. But you're going to add icing on top of the cake that we're going to get a vehicle that is environmentally friendly. These new electric vehicles, also known as EVs, don't produce any tailpipe emissions and would help eliminate about $3 million of fuel from police spending per year. Tyler Aldano, WMNF News, Tampa. For weather, today expect a mix of sun and clouds with thunderstorms this afternoon. Your high's around 91. Tonight, you might see some showers with overnight clouds and a low near 77. And tomorrow, it will be cloudy with some scattered thunderstorms and a high near 90. I'm Megan Bowman with the WMNF News Headlines on 88.5 FM and the WMNF app. This is The Scoop, recorded at WMNF Tampa.